Hello everyone and welcome to match number six of the Glimmer Gauntlet. We have Pavel running Amethyst Sapphire and Eric running Emerald Ruby, both players very well known in the Lorcana community. My name is Brandon, also known as B Squared, and I'm joined by Dan from Hobbies and Happiness. Hey guys! <laughs> I have Brandon, it's it is so very hard to match your enthusiasm sometimes, but here I am. Uh, this this is me matching Brandon's enthusiasm. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to match number six i'm glad to be here how are you doing brandon yeah man i'm excited for the glimmer gauntlet i've been enjoying the matches so far uh anybody watching there should be five other matches that are already uploaded you guys should go watch that uh for anyone who doesn't know what the game what the glimmer gauntlet is it's a tournament that was put on by the glimmer gang uh which is the channel you're likely watching this on right now um and it's a charity tournament so 15 lorcana content creators were chosen they were each given a random ink pairing, so they didn't get to decide which ink they ran. And then they were instructed to build a 60-card deck out of just rares and lower. So only commons, uncommons, and rares. And they're basically duking it out, single elimination, all the way through, randomly paired. Um, and all 15 have chosen a charity. And whoever wins the Glimmer Gauntlet, all of the proceeds go to charity. Um, there should be a link in the description for anybody that wants to donate so if you want to donate to the uh, glimmer gauntlet i recommend you guys go down there it's a really awesome cause it's really a uh, really fun thing for these player to for these players to compete for uh, and overall just a really awesome thing um, but i think we should talk about the matchup real quick i mentioned earlier pavel is running amethyst sapphire and er and eric is running emerald ruby both have some pretty key ink colors if you uh, take my opinion. I'm thinking of Amethyst specifically. One of the fun things about the Glimmer Gauntlet being that you can't use super rares and legendaries. So you really have to think outside of the box on what kind of deck you end up building. But Amethyst still has some really strong cards with the entire Madame Mim and Merlin package still there. But on the other end of that, Eric with Ruby, you still have your Bee Prepared, you still have your Maui's, you still have a lot of really strong cards over in Ruby. So I'm really excited to see what both of these players bring to the table. Uh, it's a little unconventional, their ink pairings. So I don't know, Dan, what kind of, if you had to go in a direction for either of these, what are you thinking? How, how would you build your Glimmer Gauntlet deck? Okay, so to be honest with you, um, because these are so unconventional, you said we for e Eric's running Ruby. Was it Ruby Emerald or was that Ruby? Yeah, Emerald? Ruby Emerald. All right, so Ruby Emerald, man. I who 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 does that? Who plays <laughs> Ruby Emerald? I'm sorry. Like if I were Eric, Eric, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not sure what I would have done in your situation. But to be honest with you. Amethyst is one call. Like if I was given Amethyst, I would say, thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. <laughs> Have a nice day because yeah, I'm not losing anything. You've got the mint package. You've got, you've got the Merlin package. You can sing friends on the other side. There's pretty much, you're, you're not really missing out on a whole lot. Emerald Ruby, to be honest with you, I'm just excited to sit here and watch and see what Eric does because I, I, I'll tell you what, if I had to bet on what he's going to do, I'd have no stinking clue, to be honest with you. <laughs> and I'm excited. Wait, wait, hang on. Wait, it's Ruby. I bet you were going to see, bet you were going to see a Maui here at all. That's, that's one yeah. line that I would take, but that's yeah, the I'm only one, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, a Ruby deck has to play Maui in it, right? It's just one of the yeah. strongest cards in the yep. deck. The only thing that I saw when looking through the commons, uncommons, and rares for that ink pairing was really evasives. Like, there's a, quite a yeah. good bit of evasives, and I know really early on in the first chapter, that was sort of a deck that crept up and tried doing stuff. So yeah. I'll be eager to see if uh, Eric took that route. Uh, and then, like, like you said with Pavel, amethyst in anything you don't really it doesn't really matter yeah. what the extra color right. is like you have right. all kinds of uh card draw you have removal you have instant lore gain you have everything that you would want in amethyst so yep. um i think sapphire has some really strong like uh mid-game characters with a lot of lore so i could see pavel taking a more aggro approach with an amethyst sapphire list yeah, uh, but uh, I believe Sapphire also has some pretty strong locations, too. So I could see him taking a location route. I don't know. 
Yeah, Sapphire probably has one of the best two lore locations. Again, it's just a vanilla, but I think yeah. that that stat line on McDuck Manor is very well statted for the cost. And there's a reason you see McDuck Manor in a lot of Sapphire decks in the current metagame. Yeah, I totally agree. So I guess that's enough speculating from us. That's basically what we think, but we can just go ahead and see what they're doing. Let's get this match started. I think Pavel's going to end up going first. I think he won the die roll against Eric, so uh, we'll see what he decides to do. Now, to be honest with you, if I'm just watching this, I got to go with Pavel here with that play mat. I mean, that's just a gorgeous play mat. Yeah, I know. If you see that play mat, you know that they did really well at Gen OG. Con. For, they're no, yeah. yeah, they're an OG. Yeah, they're an OG. They've been here since from the beginning. Both of these guys have, but that means Pavel yes. won this at Gen Con. Yeah. So, uh, yep. you know, he's a yep. serious competitor. But Absolutely. we start with uh, Pavel inking a Pua and playing a Pascal. That's reading really aggro vibes for me, seeing both the Pua and the Pascal, yeah. uh, both aggro cards. Pua being able to quest for two, put it into your deck when it's banished if you want, and then Pascal getting evasive whenever another character is on board. Man, I'm you know what? A... This this is this is like the first time I think I've seen Zazu being played. <laughs> <laughs> i've props played to you prop props to you eric <laughs> so yeah i mean that's really reading location deck right like yeah. why else would you be playing yeah. zazu you know yeah. maybe eric's going and the he route. inked fang he inked fang okay okay he inked a fang so yeah. i'm expecting to see a lot of locations uh with um eric's deck that maybe like a oh, neverland or uh, something at, oh that no that's, yeah so that that's a fantastic turn two play yeah, that's Pavel a huge, there. huge tempo shift for Pavel playing Befuddle yep. and then getting rid of the Zazu. The mm -hmm. uh, the Pascal has evasive. It doesn't really matter right now, but he also has the Chernobog followers, so he can quest and draw another card if he wants to, maybe play another character after that. That's really going to put Eric behind. And, okay, so I, wa I want to talk about this turn two play real quick. So um, that's a really feels bad for Eric there turn two because Pavel had a very powerful turn two with being able to put down a turn box follower and then befuddle his Zazu and now forcing Eric to only have one character on board where he could easily have two. And so, yeah, he has three lore on board, but now we see Pavel answer that three lore with a three lore character of his own. Wow. That, that was a really big tempo swing there with, I mean, befuddle is an amazing card. <laughs> Been saying it for a while. We've a great card. And this is why. Yeah. And especially in this format, you know, one of the easiest decks to build in a format where you don't have super rares and legendaries is aggro because you lose yeah. a lot of really good. I see you lose a lot of really good board wipes, but you lose a lot of key components that a lot yep. of these other decks like to lean on. Um, yep. And Eric is just trying to match Pavel's pace, playing both the yeah. Minnie Mouse and the Simba with a lot of lore. But Pavel yep. already has a pretty good lead. He, I mean, Pavel's got five lore on board already. He's up to three lore currently. And yeah. the characters that Eric has on board are not good characters to combat uh, Pavel's Right. Think, uh, Pavel's board right now. If you you really don't want to challenge anything with Simba, if you don't have to, because you would rather gain all that extra lore. Uh, yeah. But Eric must not have anything that he can answer this with. But but to be honest though, that um, Minnie Mouse Surfer was is huge as well. Being able to now answer the Pascal as well, because now both players have an evasive character on board. And now we just see Pavel questing out here, which I mean, to be honest, I'd probably be doing the same thing. I mean, he is in a commanding position right now and it's, and he's just saying, all right, Eric, I'm taking the driver's seat. I'm putting pedal to the metal and now it's up to you to stop me. Yeah, I totally agree. At least Minnie Mouse is going to be able to get rid of Pascal, which could be an issue for Eric if left unanswered, be it questing yeah. for one every single turn. We'll see if he decides to do the hard thing, which would be to challenge something with the Simba and just uh, lose it. We see him ink another location. So Eric seems to go really heavy on locations in this deck. And when you're playing against a deck like Pavel's that goes out fast and wide, you, locations aren't going to be helpful at all. So we'll mm -hmm. see if Eric can play anything to help him. I'm struggling to think of anything in um, Ruby or Emerald to really help him here. We do see him play a fan the flames. It looks yep. like to ready yep. his fan the um, flames. mini. Okay, so that's now, not bad. Right. That's not singing, bad. Singing a, a mother knows best to bounce the caterpillar back to hand, causing Pavel to slow down on tempo a little bit. Honestly, this is really what 
Eric needs. He's yes. slowing Pavel down, also playing some things that is going to give him a little bit of an advantage on a board state, or at least try to race Pavel, currently having seven lore on board, and Pavel doesn't really have a way that he can answer it. I mean, but but now look look at that tempo shift. That that was a very that was insane to yeah. be able to take out uh to take out that Pascal and then re ready the mini with uh Fan the Flames and then being able to sing Mother Knows Best. I mean, that was what was it two? I mean, that's two cards from hand. I mean that that was a vi- that was a very very good um set of plays there by Eric. I really like that there. Yeah, he's really set himself up to almost be ahead at this point. Two evasive characters, Pavel's probably not going to be able to touch. I can't think of anything right now that would that would give him a very quick response to the Minnie Mouses mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. Eric can keep them on board. And then, of course, you just have the three lore Simba sitting there waiting to be exerted as well. Pavel right. has very little board right now, though we could see something. It's still his turn, and he might go up to four ink. Right. And he was, and he was oh, wow. He's just, he just drew three cards, right? Because he was able to quest with that Trinobox followers, activate its effect to banish the card and then draw a card, and then was able to sing friends on the other side with Maleficent. Oh wow. This is this all right. So that's interesting. We're seeing we're seeing the inking of Madam M Fox. Is he gonna play a Madam M Fox to bounce that Maleficent to be able to replay her next turn to draw a card? But th- this this is this is the power of Amethyst. Amethyst does extremely well in the late game. It has a lot of pieces that are able to make Amethyst as a color extend its any deck that you have Amethyst in into the long game. Yeah, it's one of the places that Amethyst really shines purely through card draw, it feels like. Uh, Ruby Emerald does not have great ways of drawing cards currently. Ruby, I think, Mm -hmm. is the ink that has the least number of cards that help you draw cards and then emerald might be right behind it so it's why i kind of like these fan the flames that we keep seeing from eric he has to keep his characters healthy and not being banished because he's probably low on a hand he knows he's not going to be able to refill his hand very easily and he really needs to get all the mileage he can out of these high lore characters which is exactly what he's doing he has the mini mouses here with evasive being able to right. quest over and over, not being touched. He's going to get three lore from the Simba and then ready the Simba back up. So it's going to be difficult for Pavel to touch that as well. Really putting a lot of pressure on with the Cursed Merfolk as well, saying, I'll quest with this next turn. You're drawing a lot of cards, but I'm going to make you discard one if you want to challenge the Merfolk. Right, right. And I mean, look at the look, look at the shift in these board states now. I mean, we were just we were talking two turns ago about Pavel's board state. And then now... Look at how the tables have turned. Oh, how the turntables have <laughs> turned. Uh, that's the phrase, right? I- I'm getting that correct. I it's believe. something yeah. like that, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm right. pretty sure that's how it goes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. We see Pavel just do more amethyst things, just dropping do another more amethyst in. things. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's the second he fox can... we've seen yeah, ink also. That's interesting. All right. Okay, so, so now we see we now we see Genie uh ee- living space i i just love being able to say that you know i know it's so itty fun bitty living space so much fun but th- but that G- that's a great statted character for the cost i mean like in a format such as this vanilla characters with solid stats are going to see play and honestly genie in my opinion is one of them but pavel just has to answer eric's board because eric has nine lore on board right now i believe two four six seven eight nine yeah he has nine lore on board at the moment I don't know, yeah. man, I, man, I'm interested to see what's going to happen this next turn. This is this is a very interesting board state, Brandon. Yeah, this is this is a race right now because Pavel currently has game on board next turn. Pavel's up yeah. to 13 ink and he has exactly seven lore on board. So where Eric probably wants to just quest out with these characters and threaten to win the next turn. He's going to have to do something to slow Pavel down, at least for a turn. And it looks like uh-huh. he's going to have to double challenge with the Ooh. Minnie Mouses, which feels Oof. horrible that if you're Eric. So bad. All right. And it, look, it looks like they're, yeah, they're, 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 fi- they're figuring out where, where all that damage goes. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that, that, that feels so bad. You're having to take your two questing lower characters and swing them both of them into the same character man that's a feels bad yeah 
It's what you have to do, though, when yeah. the game's on the line. We'll yep. see what he drops down. Okay, he's dropping down with a ray that's going to yep. have a three lore on it. Yep, that's a three, three lore. That, so, um, yeah, that's a three lore character with evasive. Um, but right now, I mean, I think right now it looked. Yeah, I, I cannot. Unfortunately, I cannot read <laughs> how much <laughs> lore Eric has at the moment. Um, but it, uh, it, it, this, 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 this is a very, very close game. Um, yeah, man. What, what do you, what does? So the question is, does Eric have lethal on board? Like that's, that's the question. Yeah, if Eric has lethal, okay. No, oh, never well, mind. <laughs> 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 how many times oh, have we man. seen that this wouldn't be uh this wouldn't be an amethyst game if goat doesn't just win <laughs> this is, poor eric that was great <laughs> oh man he did everything he could to stop pavel there at the end having to swing both minis in just to drop one lore from the maleficent and pavel said it, it doesn't matter, matter. <laughs> <laughs> i had goat in hand <laughs> <laughs> oh man hey eric i know how you feel man <laughs> i yeah. think we all do <laughs> yeah that feels horrible horrible yep. for eric yeah yep. but i mean that's just amethyst for you like yep. it seems like both of these players are playing very aggressive decks just trying to get to 20 as fast as possible pavel went first you know maybe that's all that it was is that pavel went first now eric's going to be able to go first and if he can get ahead of Pavel, especially with some of the tools he has, being able to bounce some of Pavel's cards. I don't know if Eric's mm -hmm. running any kit, kit cloud kickers as well, but being able to bounce with uh, Mother Knows Best, also being able to use Fan the Flames or any LeFou's to keep his stuff ready so Pavel can't touch it. You know, if Eric gets the right starting hand, I can see him running away just like Pavel did this game. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing too. When you look at aggressive decks being paired against each other, which to be honest... Typically, I mean, you you don't tend to see. Uh, no, I I guess you do. I was I was going to say you don't tend to see amethyst decks, um, being the aggressor, being those aggro colors. But they a hundred. I mean, they a hundred percent are, and they very easily can. Um, but it really comes down to what are they like? What are they getting paired with? And to be honest, like amethyst sapphire, we don't typically see those colors being paired up against each other for an aggressive build but when you're able to pair them up with two multiple two and three uh, lore questing characters you can do that very very quickly and pavel showed us how in that game that was that was uh that that that, that was that was a match for sure yeah i mean we saw how much work a card that almost never sees play caterpillar did right it just an mm -hmm. inkable three drop one three but with that three lore and all that willpower eric just didn't have a character with enough strength to deal with it efficiently and yep. it doesn't take very many turns questing with a three lore character before you're in a really difficult spot especially yep. against amethyst because of amethyst's specific ways to gain lore outside of just playing a character and having to quest with them right Right. You, which you is why in that close. which is why in that matchup, Simba, Scrappy Cub, I like I don't want to say it's a bad card because it's clearly not. But when you're having to go up against characters that also have maybe one strength but have three, four willpower, I mean they can only do one thing in any in basically any matchup, and that is mm -hmm. quest. All right. Yeah, so it looks a... like Eric Eric's er, Eric's off to a quick start here in game number two, uh, with that curse merfolk. Yeah, an amazing turn one play. All Curse Merfolk is there to do is to quest. So it's a great yep. one drop. You can quest it on turn two. And then if Pavel decides to respond, he has to discard a card, which is great card advantage for Eric. I'm going to push back a little bit on Curse Merfolk only being there to quest. It's also there to, to take a card because... Sure. Like Curse Merfolk is always going to be well, ninety nine percent of the time, it's always going to be a one for one, especially in a board state such as this, where um, now because now Pavel is gonna is going to ask the question: Do I just quest with Olaf, or do I swing in trading a card from my hand to to be able to do that? So that's why that's why, in my opinion, Curse Merfolk is such a such a great card at the one drop slot. 
Yeah, and we see Eric not let up on the gas here either, nope. dropping an Enchantress immediately afterwards. Enchantress, another really good card, usually a one for one if she has to be challenged because Enchantress uh, essentially becomes a three one when she's being challenged and is inkable with two lore. So he's Eric's just questing with Cursed Merfolk. I imagine Pavel will challenge in with Olaf to get rid of the Merfolk and discard a card. Um, but then he's probably going to have to challenge the Enchantress again. Eric's essentially right. putting Pavel on the back foot here, forcing Pavel to respond to all of Eric's aggression, which I think is the place that Eric wants to be. Right. And it looks like pa Pavel just matching matches that energy with Maleficent biding her time here. So dropping a Maleficent. Let's see what this other one is. And there we see. Oh, that. no. Oh, man. Goodness gracious. So what is he going what, to decide to target? Balance? All right. Okay. All right. Chris Murphy. So, 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 all right. So this is, this is actually really interesting. Um, to me, to me, <clears throat> that makes Curse Merfolk even better because Curse Curse Mer Merfolk's a one drop, a one drop that quests for two. So now you, so now that card has the potential to <clears throat> take two cards from Pavel. Yes, you're you're down on tempo, but now Eric matches that tempo shift with Kit Cloud Kicker. So I'm assuming, so we see Kit Cloud Kicker here. I'm assuming he's going to target that Maleficent. Yep. So now we see yeah. Maleficent biting her time going back to Pavel's hand. So that's why I think um, I'm okay. I, I'm fine. Like if I'm Eric, I'm very fine with Pavel bouncing my Curse Merfolk back to my hand with that befuddle there. What, uh, what do you think about that sequence there, Brandon? No, I think that was a very interesting play, kind of for the reasons that you already mentioned. Curse Merfolk is a problematic card for all the reasons you mentioned earlier. It almost always is a two for one. So as soon as it comes on board, you just have to deal with it. You have to take it on the chin and say, I know that I'm going to discard a card, but it's more important that this card goes away. And especially with Pavel playing Amethyst, I imagine you have plenty of ways to draw cards and keep your hands full. So mm -hmm. discarding one card from your hand now probably doesn't feel the worst. Um, whereas the Enchantress is going to banish whatever you run into it. Like right now, right. he runs the Olaf into the Enchantress. Yep. Olaf's going to go away. I think I would have preferred to challenge the Merfolk with Olaf and bounce the Enchantress back to Eric's hand and say, yep. well, now you have a two drop in your hand. Maybe you yep. can ink it, but you didn't get any value out of Enchantress. I kind of yep. wasted a turn for you. I, I agree. I, I'm I'm right there with you because again, like you like you just said, if if I'm Eric there, I'm okay, I'm okay with that transaction. <laughs> like what just happened yeah. <laughs> now? Because now my kit, you you're if you go to quest next turn, most likely, most likely Pavel's going to quest. Now, granted, he'll quest for five, right? So most likely he quests for five next turn. And if he does that, then all right, then I then he um Eric can very easily just throw that kit into both Pinocchio and Maleficent. So yeah, you, you can have ahead. a really strong trade here. Uh if you're <clears throat> Eric and you have any of those Fan of Flames or LeFous that you're playing, Pavel decides to exert his characters. Kit can take a two for one for both the, this Maleficent and the Pinocchio if he has that sequence, right? Yeah, and and we and we saw we saw fan of we saw two fan of flames in game one. So like, does he have it here? Because if he did, again, another it'll it'll be another really big tempo swing for Eric. Um. So cur so currently it's um Pavel six lore Eric four lore. We see him ink. I believe that was a Tinkerbell. I, I could not so. make that card out. Okay, we're going heavy on the locations for Eric. Heavy. This is interesting. Yeah. I'd, I, this is an interesting play because we're sort of putting he's Pavel. Dumping his hand. We're, uh, he's dumping his hand on board, and we're being aggressive in, in two axes, especially now that we see two yep. Cursed Merfolk being played as well. Mm -hmm. Pavel has to be able to both answer characters on board and locations on board, which yep. is very difficult to do. There's not going to be a card that Pavel has that's going to be able to take care of all of it efficiently. And the longer that Pavel decides not to take care of the characters, they're going to keep questing or they can take out Pavel's board. And the longer he doesn't deal with the locations, the same thing's going to happen. They're just going to keep gaining more every turn, putting pressure right. on Pavel. Right, right. Now, what's interesting here is I think I think if I'm Pavel, he has to throw that Maleficent 
into Kit because, again, lo looking at Eric's board, oh, my goodness, another Befuddle. Another yeah. Befuddle targeting, another Curse Merfolk. Uh, again, I, I, I said it I said it earlier. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I don't like that. But, again, like, what – in what, this else board state, what else is he going to target? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. He, he has to slow it down. You you um, know you have to get rid of the kick, ca cloud kicker. You don't want to bounce right. that because then he's right. going to bounce your character Correct. and you need your character Correct. to challenge right now. Correct. So you'd just rather Eric not gain two lore next turn with the Curse Merfolk, challenge, Correct. throw the Curse Merfolk back to hand and then challenge what you can and get rid of the kit. And so we see two locations on board for Eric. One of them is Agrabah and it looks like the other location is RLS Legacy. Mm -hmm. Is is that correct there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And if I'm so RLS Legacy has a oh my goodness oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness Eric oh the pirates Down. are coming goodness so does RLS Legacy have two lore or one lore I can't remember has two lore oh Agrabah RLS Legacy both have two lore he's got just six so passive lore Eric is at ten lore now so he had the two locations on board from before. Um, oh my word, he's got two, four, six. He, Eric has lethal on board. <laughs> yeah, like I don't, if I'm Pavel, I don't know how you answer this. Arliss uh, Legacy not. has eight willpower. I can't think of a card in Amethyst or Sapphire with potentially five ink this nope. turn to take nope. care of all of that in time. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Nope. Um, and again, he... Ch <laughs> he challenges in, he challenges into the curse... So you have to imagine in this board state, he's going to challenge into the Curse Merfolk with Male uh, Maleficent Sorceress, not biding her time, because you're going to want to quest with the biding her time here. But again, what are you what are you discarding? What are you going to discard to do that? So I'm interested to know what's in his hand. I mean, I mean, the 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 lore totals right now are 10 to 8. That's close. But then you look at the board mm -hmm. state. Board state, it ain't close. <laughs> no. No, it is not close. No. <laughs> the only thing I'm thinking of is Pablo needs a fox right now so that oh, he can yeah. at least take Perfect out the seven. Agrabah. Maybe he can do some damage on the RLS legacies and yep. m like just pray that he draws exactly what he needs to yep. stay in this game. But and yeah, spell book spell is book's not, not going to do it. Spell book's not <laughs> it. Yeah. He'll uh, be befuddle. Again, Three befuddles to the merfolks. Wow. <laughs> Those merfolks keep bouncing to hand. So, and, and again, that curse merfolk did its job again by yeah. taking a card out of Pavel's hand. Is it going to be enough? That's going to be the question. So now Pavel has a choice. What do I challenge into to try and slow Eric down? I don't think it's going to be enough this game. What do you think, Brandon? I don't think so either. I mean, I don't know how many cards Pavel has in hand, but he's going to have to discard one if he challenges the Merfolk. Okay, so he doesn't have any cards in hand, so that's perfect right. in this case. Yep. And then yep. you just have to swing your Maleficent into you something, to. into one of the locations, because you need to put as much damage as possible. But he Unless Pavel's just to. saying... Yeah, he chooses yeah. not to. It looks so like right Pavel's now, trying to race, which he does. I don't think he wins because right now you have to look at the strength on board. So strength on board, because again, Eric here is gaining six. All right. OK, so we're going to do mother knows best. Uh, looks like bounced. OK, no, that's 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 good. So. All right. So there's a lot going on here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Eric, <laughs> Eric just bounced. All right, so so that that's it. E Eric takes yeah. game number two. Um, that was a oh my goodness, that <laughs> what a different game. That's insane. Like just what locations again, like having locations stick early on with no board state clearly matters. <laughs> very yeah. very clearly. Yeah, I mean, locations aren't great when you're behind, right? Because they don't yeah. really help you do anything against your opponent's board. But the moment you get an inch of leeway, if you're a little bit ahead and you can play a location and it sticks, and you can also play some characters that are threatening and really put your opponent in a difficult position saying, I have to get rid of these characters and these locations. I mean, we saw the power of that with Eric's game right there. Just the Agrabah and the RLS by itself was crazy. I feel like the right. second RLS afterwards was just the nail in the coffin at that point. Yep. How are you supposed to deal with that? 
Uh, that's a very good question. I, I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> in Pavel's colors, I don't think you can. You know, I think no. the and, only and, things you're going to be able to do is rush Fox with it potentially. And I mean, that's still not enough with RLS no. having eight willpower each. Yeah. Uh, again, RLS Legacy is a. V- I don't want to say it's an underrated location because it's not like it's it's not underrated. I, I think I don't want to say it's correctly rated either. It's just it's a very good <laughs> card. It like, is. It's a very, very good card. Like all of those two, like even even Agraba, correctly timed, cor- like a, a two lore location at the correct time can be devastating for any opponent. And that's and, and like that's what we saw. Uh, like we saw multiple of those from Eric in in that in that game number two. It's just okay. I have this lead, and now what are you gonna do? He's just like he. It was like he vomited his hand, and they were all great cards <laughs> for that situation. And Pavel's like, all right, I don't know if I have an answer. And like to Pavel's credit, he did what he could. I mean, we saw those three befuddles. Um, he did what he could, but it was just not enough for those. For that alien pirate ship, I don't know, is, is is it an alien pirate ship? Do we call it an alien pirate ship? I mean, it's a spaceship. We're just going to go with a space yeah, pirate it's ship. Yeah, a spaceship, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a space, a space sea pirate ship. It's a, it, it has a lot of classifications, you know, like um, Long John Silver has uh, oh, true. captain classification. So I think that ship is going to be the classification ship. I, I don't know. I it works, I don't know. guys. It just, just you can follow my logic. <laughs> you follow my logic. Brandon, I'll believe you. Yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Brandon's over there, like, no, guys, I don't, he's he's crazy. Yeah, I'm just, I'm so confused, guys. This I have no true. idea what Dan's talking about. But this is also true. I, I am, I, I am also crazy. All I know is they're space pirates. They are space pirates, and we see a no turn one play from Pavel here. That's gonna okay. Make her feel good. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of interesting because I was about to say both decks seem to be running characters that don't have much strength, which is, I think, why the location plays from Eric were really yeah. strong last game. There was yep. not much that Pavel was able to do about it, yep. but Eric went first to that game. The game that Pavel won, Pavel went first, and it's kind of like when you have both of these aggro decks, whoever can go first and start applying the pressure first really has a lead. So I was going to say that Pavel being able to go first really gives him an advantage, but missing a one-drop in your aggro deck can sometimes be meaningful enough to matter. It, 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 it is. It very, it very, it, it most definitely is right. But the other thing is also, you have to look at the board state and your character's stat lines. And in an aggro V aggro matchup, stat lines matter. And cause you, again, you look right now, Pavel has a one, one, three in Pinocchio. And now we see, Eric match that we see him match stat for stat that Pinocchio with his Simba scrappy cub. So now um, again, Eric did go first, but he is able to curve out because honestly you can go second, but this is most, this is most especially important in aggro matchups is who can curve out and provide the most stats on board as cost effectively as possible they're te- they're normally going to be the winner and w- and that's kind of what we're seeing here um seeing here so far i'm interested to see what eric's going to do here on his turn 3 but I- again i think it's not necessarily who goes first it's really about who can maximize their ink spent per turn yeah and that's exactly what we see happening there's a little bit of a tug of war where one turn, Eric will have the most lore on board. And then the next turn, Pavel applies even more pressure. And then Eric responds with even more. And we just saw that with Pavel playing Caterpillar. Now he has six lore on board where Eric only had five initially. One thing that I think is interesting is in both of these colors, each or both of these ink pairings, each of these players have their own way of protecting their characters. And Amethyst, you can bounce your really high yeah. willpower characters after you exert them so that they can't be challenged. Just like we saw there, Eric has LeFou and and Fan the Flames where he can quest with stuff and then ready it back up so that he can continue to apply that pressure. So I'm wondering whether or not this game is purely going to come down to who can keep their characters safe the longest. Like who just has the cards to bounce or ready their characters and who who can quest to 20 the fastest. Right. 
Because in this board state, if I'm Pavel and I see that exerted Simba, I'm 100% throwing my caterpillar <laughs> into that Simba. Yeah, with, absolutely. With that line. Because again, like I said, like this is a battle of stat lines. <clears throat> like you have a, it, I think I think it's mostly going to come down to a battle of willpower. Like it, that that's an interesting and funny analogy, but it literally is coming down to <laughs> the willpower of yeah. the characters on board. Yeah, because even if you look now, I'm not mad about Caterpillar running into Curse Merfolk. You lose a little bit of tempo, but. Yeah. Knowing that Eric's going to have a difficult time drawing cards and knowing just how important yep. it is for him to keep a board presence, if you can remove the board presence from him, knowing that your characters on board are relatively safe, I wouldn't expect yep. um, Eric to respond by challenging the Caterpillar with, say, the Simba and the LeFou. Right. You're in a pretty good spot because you're slowing Eric down and you're sort of giving yourself an advantage knowing you can have a really explosive turn later and then make uh, Eric have to respond to you. Right. Right. And it's interesting here. I'm interested to see what's pa what Pavel's going to do. Cause he quests it out with both Caterpillar and Pinocchio. He is deciding what he's going to do with his ink. I'm interested. Are we going to see a Madame Mim Fox come down to potentially bounce the Pinocchio back to hand? Um, Cause the question is, is he going to throw any of his characters into that Ursula uh, curse merfolk Ursula's handiwork? And we see the Mim Fox come down. So now, is he going to throw that Mim Fox in front of uh, Ursula's handiwork? And it looks like he's going to do that, discarding a card, discarding a Maleficent Sorceress, which I'd be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really like this play from Pavel. You're able to remove a card from uh, Eric's board. You're also able to keep your Pinocchio safe by bouncing it back to hand after questing. You'll likely be able to play it the next turn and keep adding that pressure. You've really kind of hit Eric in a difficult spot because now, and as long as Fox is on board, Fox is going to take out anything that Eric exerts. So he knows that if he exerts his Simba and he doesn't have a way to ready the Simba again, the Simba is going to be banished the next turn, and the Fox is still going to be there ready to ready to trade with anything that eric has ready and yeah. so this fox is going to do a lot of work because as long as it can challenge the stuff on eric's board it's likely going to trade with more than one thing yeah 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 and that's the interesting thing too is looking at eric's board he has a lefou out right and now because lefou's already done his job and now he's just a two two and like you, if you want to send the LeFou into anything, it's not going to feel good because LeFou is not going to take out anything. So you have to use another card to potentially take something out with um, you'd have to throw it, throw it into the character in conjunction with LeFou. So that, you know, if I'm Eric, like I, I don't. It doesn't feel like it never feels good. Like if you're not able to match your opponent's cards one for one, it never feels good. And again, no. we talk about stat lines. It's stat lines. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Earlier, we were talking about how these games come down to who has the best stat lines on board. And especially in an aggro versus an aggro matchup, it's just who's throwing down the most stat lines, who has the most lore. And usually, the player that has to give the other player the reins and say, I can't continue questing, you're going to outrace me, loses. But this that's sort of the spot that Eric's in right now because... The LeFou has one strength too small to right. effectively take anything out. But questing with the LeFou and questing with the Simba isn't going to get you anywhere because Pavel can easily respond to in any of that. So you're likely just trying to do what damage you can, potentially challenge the Caterpillar with the LeFou to at least put some damage on it. Okay, no, it looks like he's going to sing with the LeFou instead. And I think... That gives Simba evasive for the turn. I think that's you can fly with me. Yeah. So yep, that, he's just yep, trying to keep Simba you can safe. Fly. You can fly. You can fly. You can fly. Simba can fly. Simba's <laughs> flying through uh, the streets of London right now um, with Peter Pan and all the darling children. 
Avoiding Madam M. Fox chasing oh, yes. his tail. Yep. <laughs> yeah, That's correct. You're, you're, you're welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for that visualization. <laughs> it's like a different version of the Lion King. Instead of hyenas, it's just <laughs> Madam M. Fox. <laughs> in, in, instead of <laughs> instead of Lion King on the savannah, it is in the streets of downtown London. <laughs> hey, I'd watch that. That sounds that you know, that sounds like a Lorcana thing, if I've ever heard it. This sounds yeah, exactly yeah. like a floodborne scenario just happening. And now we talk about stat lines, and Pavel says, "You want stat lines? I'll show you stat lines." <laughs> and throws out all of all of these characters and stats on board. And right now, Pavel's sitting at twelve lore with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lore on board, and says, "All right, Eric, match that." Yeah, and Eric says I'm scared. <laughs> Eric stat lines are killing me, man. The two but he's, strength, the less the, than three strength, and the is thing tough. about Eric's deck, right, that we've seen as very much highlighted here is he's spending so many cards just trying to protect one or two things, and when you do that, normally, again, typically, it's not a very good use of of your resources, which are your cards. And we see Pavel just being able to use all of his resources to commit all of those to the board and affect the board state in an effective way. Because, um, again, I mean, Pavel has four characters on board to Eric's two. So I see what Eric was trying to do. Um, and again, in certain spots, it works. It worked for him really well in games um, in, in those first two games. He mm -hmm. was able to make a lot of those tempo swings. But now he's forced to throw his cards into his opponents and lose them to the board. Yeah, unfortunately, I think if Eric loses this, it's purely to stats, just not having enough strength to effectively trade with Eric's stuff. And we see it yep. there having to throw the... It looks like the Simba into, I forget what card, or the Caterpillar that the Caterpillar. Uh, Pavel yep. just had on board. He's going to decide to, it looks like Quest with the Tinkerbell and put on a little bit more pressure instead of running it into the Fox. But this definitely doesn't look too good for Eric. He's playing out an RLS Legacy. Yep. I'm not sure how much that's going to help him here because he really yep. needs to answer Pavel's board state and the location's right. not going to help him with that. Yep. When, 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 you, when you are on the back foot, locations aren't going to help you but you know eric probably doesn't have much else he can do in hand because again right. with those colors you're 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 hard pressed to draw some cards yeah and i don't think we've seen eric draw an extra card this whole game so right. every turn he's drawing a card then he's inking a card and playing a card so he's losing and, cards faster than and he's gaining that them. is exactly why your cards in your hand have to that's why they matter so much that is why they have to affect effectively answer what is happening on the board. And when you're constantly using them to protect a one, one, it's very, very difficult for that card to stick around long-term. Yeah, I totally agree. We see Pavel just questing out here, questing for five, going up to 17. I don't think he can do anything to win this turn, but if he drops a goat or if he drops now, a spell now, book, on. wait a second. Didn't we say that in game one? <laughs> I didn't okay. See that before. okay okay there's the spell book <laughs> he can't win this turn you, you but he can win be, next turn you always have to be careful when you're when you say those words <laughs> when you are watching a, an amethyst deck perform because you never know <laughs> yeah i feel like there's always an asterisk after those yeah. words yeah yeah um Big giant scare quotes. They can't win this turn. And then, oh, wait. They Unless win. they have one of these six cards available yeah. to aim at this. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, it looks like Pavel takes down, takes the game for Amethyst Sapphire. Congratulations, both players. Re really well, a really, really well fought game between these two players, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, both games were relatively close, especially the first, or sorry, all three games were relatively close, especially the first two, I think. And we really saw both decks sort of shine at what they were designed to do, which I think is really fun. Um, there is a little bit of an upset, though. 
Pavel actually is not going to move on from this round uh, for, I think he's busy or he's not, he just can't play in the next round. So even though Pavel won this match two to one, Eric is actually going to be the one moving forward in the Glimmer Gauntlet with his Emerald Ruby deck. So I'm very interested to see how it ends up playing against the rest of the of the content creators of the tournament. Yeah, the rest of the field. And I will say, all right, the only reason I'm saying this, Brandon, is because we just literally like 20 seconds ago said asterisk. So speaking of asterisk, Eric is going to have an asterisk <laughs> next to his name as he moves forward. Eric, I'm it's just funny. Okay. All right. All right. It's, just, it's a funny thing. All right. <laughs> hey, it is, it's not over for him. That's yes, the correct. that's the fun thing here. You know, yes. he can imagine if Eric makes it all the way to the end. How crazy would that be oh, yeah. coming down to, you know, Pavel simply not being able to make the future games, just having the, scheduling okay. conflicts. So the thing about Eric, for those of you who've never met Eric, right, or 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 have ever talked to him, he's he's an awesome guy. All right. He's 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 a friendly, he's a friendly guy, amazing uh writer, okay. Um, but I was able to hang out a little bit with Eric at uh, Gen Con. Not for long, but I was able to play a uh, play game or so with him, I believe. Um and I and this Brandon Brandon will tell me okay if I'm wrong but he won't because he knows this is going to be correct if Eric if Eric moves on and wins this he'll be handed the trophy and he'll say I don't deserve this yes absolutely <laughs> yes yes I, I can picture it in my mind right now <laughs> yes I've heard and seen Eric I've heard Eric say that and I've seen Eric type that many times yeah. <laughs> yes. over the internet he is definitely yes. a person that. You know, we'll, we'll, he's not going to pretend like he, uh, he made it all the way due right. to his, his own, his own vigilance. Um, but it's interesting to see. We've talked a lot about these decks. If anybody watching wants to see these deck lists, you can find them in the link in the description. They should be there. There should be a link for you guys to follow. And I want to remind everybody again this is a charity event. These guys are fighting for uh, the win so that all the proceeds go to their charity that they have decided to pick. Uh, Wait a minute. To, I, I was told they were fighting for their life. Is that, is this the wrong tournament? This, this I not feel right. I don't think, I don't think <laughs> Pavel would concede on scheduling <laughs> conflicts. If this That's was fair. for their life, <laughs> Dan, <laughs> my bad wrong tournament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got, I don't know what tournament Dan's talking about, but you know, it sounds like an interesting Tomorrow. one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see myself out, tournament. guys. <laughs> but if you guys want to donate to the Glimmer Gauntlet, you guys can do so in the link in the description. Uh, I'm very excited that you guys watched all the way through. If you have, like I mentioned before, there are plenty of other matches that are already uploaded that you should go watch if you haven't already. There's very many coming as well. Uh, the very end of this is going to be on a live stream, I believe, also for the finals and semifinals, if I remember correctly. So be looking out for that. I'm reading through the script right now to see what else I'm supposed to say. <laughs> uh, you, can, <laughs> you can find the players and the casters, uh, our socials in the description. The links will be in the description for there. Thank you, everybody, for watching this Glimmer Gauntlet match. Please follow the Glimmer Gang on Twitter at Glimmer Gang Pod for all the updates and info on the event. And with that, we're Dan and Brandon, also known as B Squared. Glimmer on.